students in real time? How do we help students learn within that? So what stories do they have to share? And are there... I need to understand, they can't get food. Or they, they need to foster a healthy disregard for the impossible. Take it away. All right. So there are two tricks I've learned to giving speeches that most people normally forget. And that's why I have note cards. First of all, you need a clever lead into the speech. And second, at some point, there should be minor audience involvement. So if you would, please raise your hand if any of the following apply to you. If you're a teacher, a parent, if you volunteered with youth, or if you are or were a student. OK, so I guess that's pretty much everyone then. I mean, I was just going to talk to you guys today about mentoring, but since you've all had first-hand experience, I guess my job's done. So have a good day and enjoy the speeches. OK, OK. <laughs> Thinking about it, do we all really know about mentoring programs? I mean, sure, we know programs like Big Brothers, Big Sister improve the outcome of youth. But what does that mean? I mean, what does it mean to improve the outcome of youth? Sorry about that. So, sorry, that was the first slide. I forgot I had a clicker in my hand. OK, so the Collins English Dictionary defines mentor as to act as a mentor to someone. So, I mean, I guess you can't really go wrong when you define something using the word itself, right? <laughs> Luckily, they go on to further define it with to train. But does anyone really know more about mentoring yet? I mean, I don't. So, we all know about these programs, and I guess we now have a definition, but how do they work? Or do they work? And if they work, why? These are the questions I've struggled with for the past two years as I've pursued mentoring programs. My first real exp experience in the mentoring world was my senior year of high school. See, I went to a math and science high school where we were encouraged to participate in the mentorship program in replacement of one class period. These mentorships were essentially uh, year-long, four-hour-per-week internships, unpaid, of course, where we could explore anything from uh, neuroscience to abstract math. And much to the frustration of my math and science school, I decided to spend my time in nonprofit organizations. So as you can see, I was a learner. <laughs> so basically what I learned from this is that I have an intense passion for philanthropy. I was able to network with some incredible leaders of the nonprofit world and gain firsthand experience that most high school students only dream of. So basically, the moral of the story is that this showed me the power of mentoring. And since graduating in May of 2010, I've spent much of my time developing and researching mentoring programs. So without further ado, this is what I've learned during these past, this past year and a half since graduation. The first thing you need to know is that there are two types of mentoring. There's professional mentoring, much like the program I participated in, and there's peer mentoring, much like the Big Brother, Big Sister programs out there. There's a clear divide, as you can see by the white space. This divide we'll talk about later, but for now, we'll talk about professional mentoring. Professional mentoring usually consists of summer internships and jobs. Um, so basically what happens is the student gets to be involved and get real work experience. But what I want to talk about is a more innovative mentoring program that takes this mentorship, this internship, and the job experience to the next level. Introducing Spark, apprenticeships that change lives. Basically what Spark does is they take middle school students and they match them to professional mentors in that child's uh, prospective career path. Basically, they take, oh, going the wrong way with this. Basically, nationally, 30% of youth drop out of school. Spark takes these students, and their alumni graduate 98% of the time. I guess that's not all that impressive when you're looking at schools like the one we're currently sitting in. But what about this? Spark works 
with impoverished and minority youth. These people come from communities where 50% are lucky to graduate. That means Spark takes these students who society likes to label at risk and underachieving and basically ensures that they will graduate. As a sociology major, I would like to think this can be attributed to the fact that this real world experience shows these students that what they're learning can be applied and it gives them value. I mean, personally, I don't always see how what I'm learning in school can be used in the real world. As an aspiring social entrepreneur, I don't really think I'm ever going to need derivatives or integrals, nor do I really think I'm ever going to be, be able to show someone where the C4 vertebrae of the spine is, need to tell anyone that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms and mole, or be able to recall the Battle of the Bulge in vivid detail. The idea is this. Not everything we learn in school is relevant, but a lot of it is. And these students don't necessarily see that. So professional mentoring gives them this real world experience and ties back a lot of their education to what they'll be needing it for, inspiring them to continue this education. So professional mentoring works. But what about peer mentoring? Peer mentoring, like the Big Brother Big Sister programs, essentially match youth to a little bit older, um, usually college age students, who basically just hang out with the kids, right? This is more of a role model effect than the guide seen in the professional mentoring. Studies have shown that programs like this increase student GPA and parent-child relationships while decreasing violence, drug and alcohol use, and skipping school. And basically, the most um, cited research article about uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, the improvements were that 46% of the mentor students, okay, sorry, the mentor students compared to a control group were 46% less likely to initiate in drug use and 27% less likely to initiate in alcohol use. Not only that, but they were 27%, 37% less likely to lie to their parents. Isn't that kind of an odd statistic? These students reported lying to their parents 37% less, but they might have been lying, right? <laughs> okay, all right, but in all seriousness, 33% less likely to hit other students. As far as academic growth goes, these students missed half as many school days enrolled in 0.8 more classes, and earned 0.16 points higher on their GPAs, not to mention dropping out half as much. So basically what happens is these uh, peer mentors act as role models and support systems that many at-risk homes lack. So peer mentoring also works. So as teachers, students, and volunteers, we all already knew that mentoring worked. So I guess I just wasted all your time. But not so fast. There are issues. For example, Spark boasts about being able to match a mentor to a professional for only $1,000. But you're probably thinking, why should we have to pay for a child to be mentored? And the issue is, and the lack of professionals who are willing to mentor without compensation. Furthermore, organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters has an issue with consistency that they've tried to solve by writing policies like you have to dedicate at least um, to hang out with your youth once a week for an entire year. But this leads to a lack of mentors in both organizations. So this is the part of the talk where I can either leave after giving you some research findings and presenting about a social issue and hopefully you're all thinking like, that was not bad. Or I can risk it all, go for broke, and hope you like innovative idea number two. And in case you forgot, innovative idea number one was where I walked away. Pretty awkward, right? <laughs> so I'm a bit of a gambling man myself. So I'm going to go ahead and give you innovative idea number two. I promise not to walk away this time. Introducing. Introducing the idea of combining peer and professional mentoring. Now that just seems obvious, right? Like that wasn't innovative at all. I present as if it's going to be this grand idea, and then I state the obvious. Well, here's the thing. 
in all of my research, I have yet to find a program that combines these two areas. So, what would it look like? The idea is this. You connect at-risk youth to a college student studying and pursuing a degree in that youth's field of interest. You then connect both that youth and the peer mentor to a professional mentor working in the field. And what this does is it provides not only the ability for the youth to look into the working world, but also see how to get there. It gives the youth not only the destination, but the path. But you're still thinking, what about these issues with inconsistency, lack of mentors, and especially the need to pay mentors? That's the beauty of the program. The program I'm working on solves all three of these, and it's called Wishing Works, Inc. The idea is, if you match all three, there's more likely to be this consistency and this want to mentor. College mentors want to be more involved because they too get matched to the professional. This allows them to also network and gain real world experience. So you help two youths now. Now, you're wondering about the professional mentor. How can you possibly see anything in it for them? And the idea is this. They now have a recruiting pool. Their companies and themselves can now talk to these youth who are pursuing degrees in their field and will graduate in a couple of years and recruit these talented youths to work for their companies. So essentially, both problems are solved. Not only that, but offers twice the amount of support to these youths, matching them with two people, and providing the support system that at-risk families lack. So this makes consistency, participation, and success much more likely. My name is Whitley O'Connor, and I'm a former at-risk youth. I'm a double major in sociology and human organizational development at Vanderbilt University. I'm the leader of an organization called Global Poverty Initiative and the founder of Wishing Works, Inc. Most importantly, I'm a mentor. Thank you.